very first question. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's been tough, obviously. You know, you're not winning games. It's been a long time since we won. It, it's, it's been hard on everyone here. You know, the players are putting in the work. We're coaching hard each week, and the hours hadn't changed. You know, but um, the results are still the same each week, so it's frustrating. But, um, yeah, it's been a hard year. That's part of coaching. Absolutely can be fixed. Absolutely. This team is not far away. You know, when you watch our guys play, obviously they're playing hard for us. You know, schematically, I think we're right. You know, just injuries and not making enough plays to win games. That's that's the issue right now. <clears throat> I think the process of winning in this league starts in the off season and goes through training camp and goes through the season. You know, we gotta fix that part. You know, we can't hope to win during the season. It's about the process and that starts in the spring, you know, through the draft and drew off season through training camp. That's got to get better for us to have a chance to win this league in the fall. So it's about the process getting better. That happens, we have a chance to win next year. Have you been reassured with your quarterback? I have not, um, but I'm not worried about that. Obviously, um, that's part of the business. You know, we're coaching to win a game on Sunday, and um, if it works out, we'll come back with a plan in the off season to kind of fix everything because it's fixable. But we have not been uh, reassured of that. And that's okay. Did you sign a contract extension last year? I did. For a couple more years? Absolutely. I did, yes. What was it like being on the front end of JJ's career? You know, you're heading into his last practice. Like yeah. Game. It's been emotional for all of us. You know, uh, Jay's had an emotional week. It's his last week of practice as a football player. But um, for me, it's been fun to watch both sides. You know, he's just an example of a guy who's worked his butt off his whole life to be a good player, and he, he wasn't always a good player. You know, it's, a, it, it's an example of giving players time to grow into what they can become. You know, he, even as a rookie in Houston, he was a guy that we were worried about early on, and he wasn't a full-time starter, but he became J.J. Watt about week 17 in the playoffs. So it's just an example of guys who, who's given time to kind of grow at their own pace and obviously, you know, being JJ, his mindset of working hard and doing things right, that helps also. But he's a hardworking guy that's earned his way. You know, it wasn't given to him from, from day one. And to watch him be a first ballot Hall of Famer has been fun for me. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's going to play hard. You know, hopefully he gets more sacks. You know, if he gets one more, I think it's his, his fifth best season. So He's shooting for that, you know, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a tough, dark game again. It's a running game first, and winning first down is the key, and uh, the force him into a passing game. But he's, he's all in. I mean, he's going to play the same way he's played his whole career, so I'm not worried about Jay at all. Speaking of a guy growing, when we look at Isaiah going into this offseason, what would be the top one or two things that you would like to see him kind of focus on as he moves forward? I think get better at everything. You know, obviously he's a, he's a guy that plays a lot of spots for us, you know, and that takes time to kind of master the techniques of being a Sam and a nickel and being a dime. And now he's playing safety this week. So I think for him it's just more time on task. He's going to grow. You know, imagine what he was last year and what he became this year. So if you can fast forward to next year, hopefully it's twice as good. And the same with Zaven. You know, Zaven went from last year struggling to having 100-plus tackles this year. So you hope – Hope next year this time it's times two, you know, and that's that's what happens with young players. They grow and grow at their own pace, and hopefully you give them time to do that, and you can maximize their careers. Um, he doesn't have one because that's that's what he's been. I mean, that's what that's why he was drafted. I mean, he is a hybrid player. He's, he's not really a behind the ball back. He's not really a defensive back. I think he is a hybrid, and that's okay. I mean, there's been plenty of guys who've had great careers doing that. His numbers speak to it. You know, his, his intelligence speak to it. So um, what he does on Sundays gives offenses fits, you know, to even name him, you know, doing the package. So I think he is he has embraced the role and it's helped us, you know, play good defense over the years and it's gonna get better and better. CJ Lamar Hamlin has been in news all week. Yeah. How do you process that? How do you address that for your players? Well I was watching it, uh, you know, obviously it was it was hard to watch, you know. I mean, you knew it was serious when the ambulance came on the field. You know, that, that never happens. So once that happened, I knew it was serious. But you process it as, you know, he's he's someone's son, you know, and maybe a husband or a father, and and um, it just comes back to what's really important in life. You know, it's a it, it's a game. You know, it's an important game for all of us. It's 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 our life's work, but it's a game. You know, and 
at the moment it was it was just just being more heartfelt for his family and, and hoping he was going to be okay. That was my uh, you know my first concern. But it's a violent game and things happen. And I mean that that thing happens. It, it rarely happens that way, but they do happen. You know, and you have to always commend the players for you know how they play this game and how tough it is and how much time it takes to get ready to play those games and to not win or you know not have a chance to be successful at it this is tough so it's a tough job and you know we all love it the players love it also but we can't forget it's a violent game and it's humans playing it I hope for a long time you know obviously your culture is pushed and driven through your players. You know, every coach is saying the same thing around the country about work hard and do things right and eat right and go to sleep, right? But it's just players players push the culture and you hope, you know, Zach and you hope uh Maja and those guys and Cam kind of take his example and kind of pass it on. I mean, that's what you want from your great players, right? From Buddha and those guys. You want guys to mimic that. You know, so Cam becomes what JJ is, the next guy who comes in, he mimics that. You know, so the culture is really pushed through your players, and having JJ here for two years should help our culture moving forward. Do you think that it's an emotional practice with JJ? Is it yeah. him? Is it the players around him? Just everyone talking about his last week of football. You know, I mean, he's been playing football since he was six years old. You know, so to have your last practice and to see the end, it's it's pretty cool. You know, because it's 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 on his terms. You know, and that's the way he wanted it. He wanted to go out playing good football and on his terms, and that's happened for him. But it's still cool to talk to him about, you know, what's happening next and, you know, less workouts and all those things. But I, I have no idea, you know, what he's going to do for hobbies because he's, he's so driven and he's so over the top, you know, with everything. So his next uh, endeavor in life is going to be interesting to see. Do you think he might have decided, you know, I need to come back and play some football? Mm, I don't think so. You know, he, he's, he's pretty calculated as far as his life. and having a newborn son and those things. So he has a plan. I mean, he, he has a plan all the time, right? You know, we won't know it until he says, t tell us, but he has a plan for life. And I think it's, it's been a while where he's been thinking about this. And, you know, do we think more of practice, like let him go out first? We got something planned for Saturday night. Okay, I'm, sure, I'm sure he'll share it with you guys after the game, but we got a special thing shared. Yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty cool. Every NFL team goes through adversity through the season. Yeah. Uh, this, it's a grind. In your experience, though, how, how extreme has this season seen just with everything you guys have done? It's been tough, obviously, with the offseason with Gladney passing away. And just, just the whole thing has been tough. You know, obviously, the losing, you know, kind of you know, wears on guys and the injuries and those things. But it's, a, it's, it's, it's been a tough season. But um, no different than anyone else. Obviously, our circumstances here are different. But the wins and losses are not in the right columns, and that's that's the key, you know. And to have a chance to come back and to fix it is, is our goal as a staff, obviously. But um, I've been here before as far as the losing, but not the off the field stuff. That's that's different for me. But not winning games in Houston. We won 12, we won 13, and we won three the next that third year. You know, the team was still in good shape. We had injuries. The QB got hurt. You know, Coach Coop got sick, and um, we didn't have a good year. You know, so we had to move on. But that happens in this league, and this league's about winning. And sometimes, you know, it's sometimes they ask you to move on, you know, before your time. But um, as a coach and a player, you kind of just cherish every moment you have as a coach and a player, and you move on. And when it's time to move on, but right now we focus on winning, and uh, focus on fixing this thing for next year. It's it it's it's different for every every place, right? You know, every every owner has this process of evaluations. I think it comes down to you know to the final game. You know, I think the product on the field sometimes you're not winning, but the product's right. You know, you watch the guys play. You know, no one's quitting. No one's no one's uh, I should say um, not, not not following protocol. You know, and that's that's what owners are looking for. You know. The football part can be fixed. Obviously, injuries, that part can be fixed with healthier players next year. But the culture, if that breaks down, that, that get, as a coach, that, that can be your demise, right? I think here that hadn't happened. You know, the guys were playing hard. The guys loved playing for coach. He hadn't changed one bit from you know, last year winning to this year not winning. He's been the same guy every day. I think the players respect that. You know, but um, the timelines, we're not sure. 
again, our focus is about Sunday winning the game and playing good again, you know, and being competitive against a very good team. That's our focus. And, um, you know, Monday morning we'll know, obviously, what's going on. But, you know, it's been honest all year. We've, we've coached hard. We've played hard all year. So I have no regrets. How big of a difference is it uh, facing Brock as opposed to when you guys played uh, Yeah. Jimmy? Well, uh, Jimmy's obviously a winner. and He's a good player. But Brock is – a starter, you know, he's not, he's, he's no longer a backup. I mean, he's played enough ball. He's got enough snaps where you can see him as a starter, you know, and I mean, he is, he is playing really good football. He's taking care of the football. He's putting him in good plays. He's playing at a high level for a young guy. Um, obviously the issue is the quarterback, but the issue is McCaffrey and Kittle and Debo and those guys, you know, and Ayuk, who's having a hell of a year. He's got a thousand yards finally as a young guy. So he's, he's developed. It's a lot of weapons to, you know, to account for, and that's my job to kind of get them all covered and stop the running game and hopefully get them in the third downs. You know, but the quarterback is doing his job. He's playing very well within their system, but he's no longer a backup in my mind. I mean, he's playing at a high level as a starter, and they can win a lot of games with him. You know, he's he's playing that well. All those weapons going up against a pretty thin secondary yeah. cornerback. What did you make of those cornerbacks from last week? Yeah. They played their butt off, you know, and obviously having Chris and having Ch Chase here with us, you know, we can you can help those guys because they understand the system. Um, this week is going to be a different challenge as far as getting Debo covered in the slot from the backfield and getting Kittle covered and getting uh, CMC covered with backers. That's always a difficult task, but those kids will play hard for us. They do it right. They'll compete, and um, we will do our best to cover them up, you know, when it's time for straight pass downs. And outside of that, we got to play and just make plays. But and no one can match up with those guys as far as you know, all five of those guys at one time. So it's my job to kind of figure out what's best for us and to call it at the right time and to uh, hopefully get some pressure on the quarterback and win some downs. But they had eight third downs, I think, last week in overtime game. So that's, that speaks to their first, second down uh, uh, success. So we got to win first down, get them in a the third down, and force them to throw it and, and make some plays. Thanks, DJ. All right, guys. Thanks, Coach. Anytime.